Genevieve speaking. In this presentation, we'll go over the type 2 error in hypothesis test. We pointed out in the last presentation that we make a type 2 error if we accept H0 when H0 is not true. We cannot control for the probability of making a type 2 error, beta, nearly as easily as we can control for the probability of making a type 1 error. We cannot simply uh, specify beta. Alpha, the probability of making a type 1 error, corresponds to the probability that X bar, our sample mean, will take such low values when our population mean is mu naught. We can easily choose a lower alpha or a higher alpha value. When the probability of making a type 1 error, rejecting H0 when we shouldn't if the population mean is mu naught, when that probability of making a type 1 error is alpha, the probability of accepting H0 when we shouldn't if the population mean is mu b instead, not mu naught, that probability of making a type 2 error is beta. The thing is, if the population mean is not mu naught, it's not necessarily mu b. It could be mu a, which gives us a smaller beta. Or it could be mu c, which gives us a higher beta. It could be any other mu value and corresponding beta value for that matter. That is why we say if we do not reject H0, we cannot accept H0 because we are unsure about how confident we will be doing that. We are unsure about what the value of beta is, the probability of making an error if we were to accept H0. Notice the closer the alternative true population mean mu a or mu b or mu c is to the hypothesized population mean mu0, the larger is beta. In other words, when the true population mean is close to the hypothesized population mean mu0, the probability of making a type 2 error is high. Or, as the alternative true population mean mu c or mu b or mu a, so going the other direction, decreases to values farther below the hypothesized population mean mu0, the probability of making a type 2 error diminishes. In other words, when the true population mean is far below the hypothesized population mean mu0, the probability of making a type 2 error is low. On the upper graph, the x bar value corresponding to the upper limit of our lower tail is z alpha, a standard error below the sampling distribution mean mu0. On the lower graph, the x bar value corresponding to the lower limit of our upper tail is a z beta standard error above the sampling distribution mean mu b. Those two values are equal to one another. Solving for the standard error. The standard error of the mean is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Plugging that in and solving for n, we get the sample size formula for one tail hypothesis test about a population mean. The sample size we need to, to get a alpha for type 1 error and beta for type 2 error. So the level of significance specified by the user determines the probability of making a type 1 error. By controlling the sample size, the user can also control the probability of making a type 2 error. In other words, for a given alpha and beta, an alternative population mean mu b, we can solve for n. Alternatively, for a given alpha and n, an alternative population mean mu b, we can solve for beta. In the example is illustrated here, beta corresponds to the p-value of an upper tail hypothesis test. And this concludes our presentation on type 2 error.